Welcome to today's episode for people interested in the extraordinary yet ancient and long forgotten stuff. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald from ownbythebeach.com. And our guest today is Giovanni Dinstmann. Hello, Giovanni. Hi, Joseph. It's a pleasure it's, to be here. Well, it's a great privilege to be here. I've been studying your meditation book. It was a long time ago and when I was still in Costa Rica. And I have Googled everything and ultimately I found your website, which is uh, liveanddare.com. And uh, I studied this book and I, I just got an idea about what would be my personal meditation style after I get to know all this, like uh, the whole palette of uh, options, you know. And and of course, it's uh, probably everybody does look for some personal style in meditation. And then I found you again. I can and now for the for the podcast interview. I'm so happy. So the topic today is mindful self discipline. So uh, Giovanni wrote actually already two bestsellers, and one is the one I just talked about before. That is the meditation Bible. It's called Practical Meditation, and it's uh, it's uh, translated in eight in eight uh, languages, and it's just a superstar book. And uh, this one is the second one he wrote recently. Recently, I don't know, uh, Giovanni, was it recently? When did you publish it? Mindful the, Self-Discipline? Yeah, 2021 was published. 2021. That is a real good one. I bought it. I bought it this morning. <laughs> okay, so, uh, but I, I looked at the, at the videos you have and at the website, and I studied it, so I'm prepared. Let's talk a little bit about Giovanni Dienstmann, meditation expert, best-selling author, and self-discipline coach. Giovanni is the creator of Life, Live and Dare, Live and Dare, one of the top five most popular meditation blogs on the planet. I found this meditation blog uh, when I was researching for meditation years and years ago. As an international author, meditation coach and speaker, Giovanni is an expert in helping people overcome anxiety and stress to live a more calm and centered life. He is the author of the best-selling book, Practical Meditation, which is available in eight different languages and has popularly been called the Meditation Bible. His newest book is called Mindful Self-Discipline, Living with Purpose and Achieving Your Goals in a World of Distractions. Giovanni's clients range from stay-at-home parents to entrepreneurs, C-level executives, and pro athletes. His acclaimed program, Limitless Life, has helped thousands of people master their mind, find contentment and clarity, and have a greater well-being in their lives. And uh, to learn more about Giovanni, and we will, of course, uh, mention this website several times and the other one also, liveanddare.com. So the topic, mindful self-discipline. Before we start going into this, I would like to just ask uh, Giovanni, tell us more about yourself. How did it all get started with you and with your journey of self-mastery? Mm -hmm. So since I was 14 years old, I was interested in topics of meditation, spirituality, personal growth, self-help, um, ancient wisdom from the Greeks and the Indians. And I was reading about everything that I could find. There was this search in me since that age for for wisdom for peace for empowerment in a way that is um mindful that is that is wise not just you know it's not about power over other people but power over oneself self mastery and in this journey i experiment with many different styles of meditation throughout the years i almost became a zen buddhist monk uh i was formally initiated into different traditions of um, different contemplative traditions. And little by little, I formed my own opinion based on my experiences about um, what is meditation, what is its role in my life and in other people's lives. So the way that I teach nowadays, it's um, most people who come to me, they are interested in developing meditation and spirituality, not just to kind of relax and feel good, if, if I say like if you all you want is to relax and feel good, just go and download 
the Headspace app or the Calm app, and that's just going to be easier. But if you want to become more empowered, if you want to get to know yourself, if you want to master the monkey mind, then that's a deeper conversation. And that's uh, what I do. I I, uh, I just have read your story and it's already like your life and you're only in your late 30s, but your life is very fascinating. The way you have uh, like, first of all, meditated thousands of hours. You have been uh, in all kinds of uh, retreats or courses on it. You have certifications. That's all. I mean, compared to what you accomplished with your books and, and what you do is nothing. However, it's interesting how disciplined you were already in your life. I mean, that you're coming to a book which is, which is a mindful, uh, you know, self-discipline. It's almost like a natural consequence. And um, so how, how, how did you manage to be so self-disciplined? I mean, if I compare it with myself, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I like I like spirituality and all this, but self discipline for me, I need more mindfulness definitely. And I didn't even think about this word before because I read like all these other books on on creating, forming great habits, you know. And I think about the Buddha, the 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 four noble truth and the eightfold path, particularly because there's it's a lot is in there, right? And then I think a lot about Taoism also because that's the power. The, the way of the power, meaning the inner power, right? And you talk about power empowering peacefulness. So we are talking about too much right now. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> so my no, question, okay. sorry. yeah. Oh yeah, thank you. you stopped. So my question would be, please let us know a little bit more about this concept of or concepts and notions of mindful mm -hmm. self-discipline. Sure. So the idea is that any change you want to create in your life or in yourself is going to be a journey. It's going to be a journey from A to B. And that change could be, you know, uh, uh, healing yourself. It could be uh, uh, growing as a person. It could be increasing your income, changing your career, getting a new relationship, creating a business, finding enlightenment, whatever, in whatever area of life is your goal, the change you want to make. It is a journey from A to B. And in that journey, you will meet many obstacles. You will at times lose motivation. You will at times lose clarity about what is it that you want and what is next. You will get distracted with things that are less important. You will procrastinate doing the work that you know is aligned with your values that's going to take you forward. You will tell yourself excuses and rationalize bad behavior. You will fall into negative self-talk and self-doubt. You will at times want to give up. There are all of these obstacles that can happen. And then there are the external obstacles that you might not be in an environment that is conducive to your goals. Or you might have people in your life that are toxic, that are trying to, to hold you back consciously or unconsciously. So whatever change you want to make in your life is a journey. And in that journey, you will meet obstacles. You will need to sustain uh, a certain effort for a period of time until that change happens. And it's only with the power of self-discipline that you are able to do that. It's what sees you through to the end in any journey. And self-discipline is composed of two different elements, awareness and willpower. And in Several personal development books, they say that willpower is the father of all virtues or the king of all virtues. We hear these two metaphors. And I would say if that's the case, then awareness is the mother or awareness is the queen. And in self-discipline, they are both united. Now, I realized that self-discipline was the strength that some aspects of self-discipline I naturally had and others I developed as I went deeper into personal development. But I realized that many people even though they they need self-discipline and may they, they may even desire it, they have a negative feeling about it as if self-discipline is something um, bad or something painful, that it has to be something that you are kind of forcing yourself to do the things that you don't want to do just because uh, they're kind of good for you. You know, there's that feeling about it. And the way that self-discipline is being uh, talked about these days, that's, the feeling that we have. It's all about willpower. It's all about mental toughness. It's all about forcing yourself 
there is that bulldozer approach, that drill sergeant feeling to self-discipline these days. And that works for some people. That works sometimes, but it takes a lot of energy and it's not for everybody. I call this the military approach to self-discipline. Now, the way I teach is awareness first, then willpower. That when you are living in awareness, when you are fully aware of who you are, of your values, of your aspirations, and when you are cultivating awareness in your day-to-day life, it is much easier to remain on track with your goals and values. You don't need to force yourself so much. You will still need willpower. Willpower is essential. But when you need to exercise willpower, it will be easier because you started from awareness. It will feel more natural and more aligned. So in mindful self-discipline, it's awareness first, then willpower. And I have found that this approach is resonating with a lot of people, not only people inside the mindfulness and meditation world, which I knew (laughs) they would resonate with this, but even people um, that are not into mindfulness or meditation, but they felt that, you know, self-discipline is so important. There must be an easier way to go about it. Yes, I think at least my fear about or my connotation with discipline I'm from Austria, (laughs) you know, Germany and all this. We had uh, the experience, the law of discipline and stuff. The word has already kind of a connotation. But then for me also, it is exactly that connotation that it has to do with willpower only. And I'm in in groups about about, um, philosopher, with philosopher, uh, you know, I'm talking about philosophy, Eastern philosophy. But I also am in the groups, in the business groups. And um, I have to say, a lot of people in my space, they they uh, they do everything with willpower. And when I look at them and their lives, I ask myself, you know, where is the awareness? Where is the the what you said aspirations, the actual aspirations? Do we really just want external success? You know, things like this, right? And if you really have this much discipline, you get up in the morning. Not you know, but I know people. Uh, you get up in the morning at four o'clock, you make your bed and you start already working. Then you have interviews and have this, and that's your life. And you have a beautiful life, maybe because that's your aspirations. But then again, I ask myself, you know, is this really, but well, not everybody has that kind of definition, like successful financially or, or becoming an influencer or these kind of things. Everybody is allowed to have ambitions the way they want, you know. I mean, of course. And uh, it defines us also as unique. Because, you know, even though we are born at different times in different places, that is also quite unique. But also we have really different desires for different experiences. And so that if you really, really know what you want, so to speak, like you say, you have to know this, then you can work with mindfulness. And that's for me then the way to self-discipline because actually like not for me then for you when i see your framework because it does create this uh, um, environment where you can see and where you can let your uh, ambitions maybe ambitions how do the hindus say about it like that the original this that desire we all have right We, we live this desire we come to this world and we have desires for experiences, whatever it is, but that can be blocked because our society tells us all kinds of things. Um, you know, this is not good or you shouldn't do this, you should do that, but it's not your original desire. So you will never be happy following mm-hmm. others. You have to know it yourself, but how do you know it? How do you recognize it? Mindfulness, right? You have to take the time for, for, for allowing the awareness to become a routine and not the awareness of how I walk or how I cook or how I eat, but the awareness of who am I. And in the book, we call this the aspiration pillar, which yes. is uh, there is a series of exercises that help you get in touch with what's most important for you. Because ultimately, self-discipline is not about self-punishment. It's about self-respect. It is you living life aligned with your values. It is you keeping your promises to yourself. It is you prioritizing what's most important for you. And when you do that, you end up liking yourself more. You experience more self-esteem. You experience more self-confidence. You finish each day more satisfied 
with yourself and with your life because you feel like, you know what? Today I have done things that are important for me to be the person I want to be. And so self-discipline first is already different from discipline. Discipline comes from external. Our parents have disciplined us. Our society wants to discipline us. Our teachers have disciplined us. But self-discipline, it comes from within. It's like, what do I want? And then can I coach myself to, to do what I need to do to achieve that? Can I be the maestro of my own orchestra? If every part of me that wants something else is like an instrument in an orchestra. Can I be the maestro and make sure that there is music, that we are all playing together nicely rather than just noise? That's one of the metaphors that I use in the book. Beautiful metaphor. But, you know, when you go into this kind of uh, like topics in ancient wisdom tradition, which you have studied intensively and you actually upgrading it, which I love because, you know, not everybody is going to go in when they know when they want to know more about themselves or, or the world uh, to study, let's say, the four noble truths of Buddha, right? <laughs> it's a long time ago. It's very valid. I love it. But, you know, you have to be really fond of, uh, of this kind of things in order to actually study it. But in your book, this is really for everybody. This is for executives, for sports people. And, you know, it's for people at home who just like to uh, get to know more about themselves and about how they can uh, improve themselves and get the power, the, the personal power to find, uh, to, to realize the things they want. Because I think it's so important. If we don't get what we want in life, we, we are miserable. It's going nowhere, right? I mean, it's like the purpose in life. So, yeah. So, you know, in a way, everyone that comes to self-discipline is because they have a goal. They have a desire. They, they want something to be different. It could be achieving something, becoming something, learning something. The, uh, the, the point that I make in the book is that at the end of the day, the journey of self-discipline is about the process itself. It's about the person you become along the way, not so much about the goal. That yes, you can achieve that goal, but once you achieve that goal, that goal will become meaningless to you and it have, will have left your system and then you will pursue another goal. Or maybe you don't achieve the goal. It's also possible. But if you are in the journey of self-discipline, you are living well. You are making each day count. You are living mindfully. You are valuing each moment. And so at the end of the day, self-discipline is a good way to live. Because when you have a goal, when you have a wish, when you, know, when you have something that you want to do, achieve, or become, you have a direction in life. There is a sense of purpose. And that, you know, to use the words of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, um, considered the father of positive psychology, a goal is an organizing force in consciousness. It helps coordinate consciousness to grow. If you have no goal, if you have no special desire, if you're just working from nine to five and spending the rest of your time watching Netflix or, or, or scrolling through Instagram, you, have, you don't have any goal and you're not going to grow very much. And I would argue that, that that is not a good life. That is not even a pleasant life. You are just mildly entertained. But there is no movement. It's not dynamic. There is no process of expansion towards something else. Yes. So self-discipline is um, get, you know, getting this impulse that we all have to grow, to become the best version of ourselves, and giving it a structure that this, this impulse, these goals, these desires, they can express themselves and lead to fulfillment. Yes, yes, and you know, the the more I think about it, it's 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 the things we want in life that make us grow. Because what we want is experiences, and they make us grow. Because you know, somehow we can't really achieve anything beyond ourselves. You know, it's not like you can run after this in this short butterfly life and achieve anything beyond yourself. What you can, what I feel is like nice is that you can slowly discover yourself who you are not a part of this universe but you are this universe like 
in a fractal you know dimension so to speak like Rumi said you know Rumi uh, that uh, famous uh, yeah, you know you know them <laughs> you wrote about Sufism and meditation in your book um, um, but uh, I I feel like it, it's uh, that is where the distraction comes in and then when you lose this then you don't grow anymore when you don't grow anymore because you grow only with your desire and with your experiences then Look, when you look around life, you know, life that doesn't grow is usually dying. You know, you go in a forest, things grow, things die. Or, you know, that's also our reality, I think, in our existence. If you're not like fascinated with our desires and our for, for experiences and all this, then we cannot grow because even though you cannot achieve anything beyond yourself, but you still are only right now, at me and at least, I'm only like a seed of that huge tree, which I might become one day, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in that sense, I see the importance. And that's why I fa it fascinates me, because suddenly when I learned about you, now about your new book and a new uh, framework, you're a meditation expert, that's a different thing, than just a meditation teacher, because you are actually um, this, uh, exploring and presenting new ways to use this old traditions like meditation yeah. wisdom and all this in a new in, in now right in this way you don't refer okay you want to know this go back to five thousand years ago no you, go, you go actually us. yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so that that is for me uh, you have basically with your approach uh it brings extraordinary long-lasting results because you don't push the willpower overly it's there but it's not like you, you show the, the connections and that's very important. For instance, when you sit down and you meditate, you have several ways to meditate. For me, it's like, you know, you can look at it like Ellen Watts says, you know, you just listen to and experience this meditation. Now, like you listen to music, you don't wait until this is over. You don't have any goals. There's no goal when you listen to music, the same way mm -hmm. when you meditate, like in nature, it just comes in and you experience it. And the other the other thing is for me also what I what I thought is and that is an alignment completely with you. I I think that uh, meditation is also at least for me to go into a very calm place where I become aware without distractions of what I really want. And then I, I like to go somehow in meditation to a kind of a, a place where there is no time and no space. But when I come back, I'm very refreshed. And uh, the things I want in life to become, again, more mindful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why do you think when we look at, let's say, uh, an author of a book, which is very popular right now, he's like everywhere and he writes about habits. His name is, his name is James Clear and he wrote the book Atomic Habits makes perfect sense to many, many people. And he has been everywhere on the media already. I read the book. But there is this, what I don't like somehow with all these authors about habits and habit creations. It's exactly that. You can always see it's only focused on willpower. And now let us know a little bit more, more deeper how this mindfulness integrates in the meditation process with self-discipline. So you have the, the meditation, you have tried out 70 different approaches. And here we talk really just about the Buddhist meditation, I believe, which is the four meditations, which I learned from your book. It's the, the, the sasen, it's the mindfulness, it's the self, no, it's uh, Buddhist, it's... Uh, Vipassana or Metta, right? And then when you go to the Hindu, where everything comes from, the self-inquiry, and then, and I learned that from you, <laughs> of course, it was a great, a great uh, page to read on your in your book. It's a self self-inquiry, <clears throat> and then it's the mantra meditation. But really, when you look at all these meditation types, it's all about the question: Who am I? How do you reach it? Well, it's like. Uh, that is the question. And then you probably need self-discipline, you know. You can't just say, okay, I'm, and I'm talking about myself, you know. I'm looking into Buddha's book about no self, anatma, anatma, 
So where is my self-discipline? There is no self. <laughs> so please let us know a little bit more about this framework, how you got to it, how you combine it with meditation or ancient meditation practices, and how this all sounds so modern uh, for everybody to learn and apply. So there are many, there are many directions that we can go um, in that question or, or in what you shared. First, in terms of uh, what's out there in the world of personal development, you know, the, there are authors like David Goggins and Joko Willink that they are both from the military. And in that type of, of writing and approach, it's all about willpower. Right? It's all about that determination, um, push yourself. And, you know, that is that is a virtue and that is beautiful and there's a, there's a place for it. But I think it's very one-sided. And then there are all, there's you know, people like Charles Duhigg and Benjamin Hardin and uh, Hardy and uh, James Clear that it's it's almost like all about the habits, right? And for me, self-discipline, it's much broader than this self-discipline. There's a it it is willpower, but it is also awareness. And if you read the book, you see that the book has forty chapters, and only two chapters are about building habits. So there's self discipline is much broader than just building habits. You cannot solve every problem in your life by building a habit. Building habits is not going to be the solution for everything that you need to achieve your goals and live your purpose. Let's say that one of your goals is to be happier in a relationship. Right? You can create certain habits that are going to, to help that and improve that, create space and better communication, et cetera. But when your partner is in front of you and, and he or she is angry and you are, and there is this impulse to go and say something that you're going to regret, there's no habit is going to help you in that moment. Right? You need awareness and you need willpower to make a different decision in that moment. The solution to everything is not habits. So um, these these authors they they do really good work, and um, it's important. But I just find that habits is not everything. There is the saying that half of success is showing up, and habits help you show up. What about the other half? What about the other half? If you just show up, that's not enough. My, you're just going through the motions. You can show up to the gym every day, but that's very different from showing up and being there wholeheartedly. You can go and push the weights every day, but if it's just your body doing it, how much benefit will you get? Versus if it's your body and it's your mind and it's your emotion and your imagination and everything is there together, that activity becomes wholehearted. And it's the same for any other activity. So habits are important. Habits are an aid, but you need to develop these two skills of awareness and willpower. And the whole book of Mindful Self-Discipline is about this. It's about awareness and willpower. And why would we want to develop awareness and willpower? Because we have goals. Because we have values that we want to live, that we want to actualize. And if we do not grow in awareness and willpower, we just cannot do it. Because almost by definition, they are not things that come easy. They're not things that is just like tapping an app and scrolling through something. They are things that require some sustained effort. That's, uh, that's, you know, when I, I live in Mallorca, it's a small island in Spain, you know it, and um, we go and walk hiking, right? And um, I sit a lot at the computer and stuff like this, so I have friends, they call me up, we go hiking. We always say, you know, when we're out there in the mountains and it's beautiful, you know what, if we have fun, if we have magic moments, then we like to do it over and over again. Whereas, you know, there are people who hike, they hike like it's a sport. So you go from A to B and fast, and it's just like a sport. And But if I do this, then I will not like it again, you know. Or it's harder to overcome my resistance to it. But if I have really a good experience hiking, then like even meditative moments, of course, and I don't run like crazy, but I, I walk and uh, just, you know, then... I like to uh, do it over and over and over again. And I think that's where my question is now. How do you increase your willpower? Because ultimately you need that willpower while you are doing things 
in the beginning, like walking an hour, two hours, which will be fun, but you know, you still have to put yourself together and say, I'm going, right? You still have to tame your bull who says, I'm staying at home and I have work or I, uh, I, I'm just lazy today. <laughs> but so how do you uh, increase the willpower gradually, gradually? Willpower, it's such a essential faculty in in the human makeup. And, you know, it's something that um, arguably animals don't have. Animals don't have long-term goals for which they are exercising control over the impulses so that they can achieve. Now, there are studies showing that animals can maybe think ahead 20 minutes and that's it, right? We are able to have a vision for the future. It's one of the things that come with a more complex brain, with a more developed uh, consciousness, that we are able to make a plan to change ourselves. Animals live and die by their environment. We have the capacity to tame our environment, to change our environment, or to change environment. And that's why we human beings have uh, survived and thrived in different parts of this planet. So... Willpower, let's let's first define willpower. Willpower is our capacity to regulate our state. It's our capacity to exercise some level of control over our impulses, over our thoughts, over our emotions for the purpose of achieving something of greater value. Right? To use that marshmallow experiment that I'm sure most of your listeners are familiar with, the kid had the option to eat one marshmallow now or if you wait, the marshmallow is in front of you, but you control yourself and you don't eat it, the, the, the person was going to come and give you two marshmallows later. So that requires willpower, the ability to control an impulse of instant gratification so that you get something more valuable at the end of that process. That is willpower. And so if all we want to do is to live and eat and procreate and sleep and have fun around us, we don't need willpower. We just do whatever we feel like doing. But that doesn't work so well for human beings. That, that is not uh, growing. That's not using the maximum of our capacity. And that eventually gets boring and meaningless. We have a deeper sense that we want to grow, that we want to uh, experience something meaningful. So how do we exercise willpower? Every time you do something that is difficult, that's an exercise of willpower. Every time that your, your attachment for comfort wants you to go left and you decide, I'm going to go right, because right is meaningful, even though difficult, and left is meaningless, even though easy. When you feel like um, sleeping in in the morning and you wake up because you have something that you want to do with your time. Every time that you do something difficult, basically, that you exercise some control over your mind, over your emotions, over your body, that's an exercise of willpower. If you are having 10 push-ups and you feel tired, you, you want to do 10 push-ups and you feel tired by the seventh push-up, willpower is what says, I'm going to finish. It's going to be a bit painful, but I'm going to finish. Or... Um, if you cannot eat a certain food item anymore because whenever you eat it, it, it's bad for you immediately or it's bad for you in the long term and you feel like eating it and you say, no, I'm not going to because I remember the long-term consequences of this. That's an exercise of willpower. When you feel like shouting at someone and you decide not to, when you feel like uh, procrastinating on an important task and you decide not to and you go and do it even though it's uncomfortable, all of these are expressions of willpower. I like to think of willpower as a muscle. The more you use the muscle, the more it grows. Will it get tired right after using it? Yes. But once you, you rest and it replenishes, it gets to a level of strength that is higher than the initial level. So um, if you, anybody that is listening, if you have goals, you will need to exercise willpower. And the more you exercise willpower, the stronger it will become. It's become trendy nowadays to say things like uh, willpower doesn't work and you should not rely on self-discipline because it doesn't work. And what I say is that willpower doesn't work if you haven't trained it. It works if you have, right? It's the same thing with any other muscle with any other capacity. The way that things are going in our modern world, you know, our attention span is diminishing. Concentration, the ability to focus is becoming each time more and more rare. So I don't 
doubt that soon enough people are going to start saying focus doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work because you haven't trained it. You are training yourself 16 hours a day to be distracted. Then when you want to focus, your focus lasts three seconds and it disappears. So you say it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you haven't developed that capacity. So it's very important to create opportunities to develop willpower, to embrace the the things in our life that are uncomfortable, but meaningful, instead of the things that are comfortable, but meaningless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a really good explanation. I need that. I just, like a sponge, I'm getting it in. But it has a lot to do with the conditioned life. I mean, we are so conditioned, programmed, you know, not because others program us, uh, but they do somehow, but you know, it's our own decision to get to get out of this conditioned life from the past where we create um, the past and the past is repeated all the time, like Groundhog Day, right? It's like that movie. And you every day you express the same thing because you have allowed yourself to be conditioned by external stuff because really the only power that comes to you as a person, I think, is from the internal, but it's not that the internal, only the internal exists, both exist. They imply each other, inner and outer. But the power comes from the inner. And so uh, the, the conditioned life is, is at least for me, the problem. I see, you know, when you get up and you have this willpower to say no, however, this conditioning is quite strong. So you might do it again and again and again, maybe until you're in the threshold and you say, I cannot drink any wine anymore because it's not good for me. <laughs> I need a doctor, you know. But ultimately, it has a lot to do with our problem. We say we are so much more intelligent than animals or we have awareness so we can plan ahead and all this. But sometimes I wonder what we are actually doing with our intelligence as humans because we are also so crazy. You know, the whole world is so crazy. And uh, I'm just saying that... Uh, the future and the past creates a lot of problems for people. Like the past, trauma and all this, the future, uh, anxiety, fear and all this, right? So, and then we cannot live in the now, in the moment anymore. Where actually, where you're creating the future, where you are, if you know consciously that you are doing this always in the now, right? Or where you are uh, having these wonderful memories of beautiful moments in the past, that's fine. But, you know, it's different than being stuck in the past. So what I want to say here is that uh, when we talk about willpower, it, it has to be outside the conditioned life, I think, because you can have, I see it all around, you know, people have willpower, but they're still operating in the conditioned life and what they try to accomplish will not make them happy because it's so external. Yeah. It's even from others, not from them, you know, like people pleasing. There are so many things in there where you say, how do I get free? How do I get out of this uh, conditioning, this programming, and can finally be free enough to in the moment now, not to be lost in the future, abstract, where in an abstract way, where in the moment where I can now listen mindfully to what I really want in life, because that's me, that's who I am. These are the experiences I want. That's why I'm here. I know you can go on and on with this, but uh, and, and yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say. It takes effort and it takes willpower to achieve any goal. The right goal or the wrong goal, they're both going to require willpower, right? So this is this is something else. Willpower is a, a fuel. Willpower is capacity. And you can use this to achieve the goals that are going to make you happy or the goals that you have just because you have been conditioned to believe that they are good things. Maybe uh, uh, having a PhD is not at all meaningful for you, but you feel that you should have because everyone around you has one. And yes, you can go and pursue that goal and it's going to take willpower. Or you can pursue a very different goal that is also going to take willpower, but it's actually going to make you happy. So these are are two different things. They are two different parts of the solution. One of them is having the wisdom and the awareness to recognize the things that are actually important for you, your real goals and values. And the other thing is having the capacity, the energy, the power to act on them and make them a reality. If you know the right goals, but you can't act on them, you know, that's not so helpful. It can be extremely frustrating. 
uh, if you don't know if the right goals and you're pursuing the wrong goals and but you're acting on them, um, well, you're, you're moving forward, but you're not going to get happy with the results. So you need both these things. You need both that awareness, that self-awareness, and the willpower to then turn that into a reality. Yes. Yeah, that's for me now, it becomes clearer talking with you, but that's for me always very important to actually, before I jump on something, like a project or whatever, I really want to be in alignment with this is what I want. And that's where the awareness comes in, right? And the mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And you know what I, of course, uh, wish for a lot of people and for everybody is that it would be easy, you know? So uh, I think it becomes easier if you are the self-discipline, if you are aware and if you know, and if you have these dreams, uh, and you are aware of them and you want to do this and that makes creates fulfillment for you. It could be enlightenment. We are not just talking about like, you know, uh, reaching goals, uh, all kinds of goals, as we talked about, like in relationships or in, in, in the business world, financial, but ultimately, you know, when you are set on, let's say, what is this really all about? And you become more like inc inquisitive about who you are and and you overcome this process of taming that inner bull and you become empty and you might even see that your whole self is just in your head because really you're so connected, interconnected with everything else that you are it, right? Tatva Masi, like they say in Hinduism, you yeah. are it. Or uh, like in Buddhism, you know, it's like uh, the, uh, the suchness. And in, 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 in Taoism, as we, as I said before, it's like interesting that the Tao Te Ching is actually, it's actually the power of the way, the power of the way. And they have several powers. Uh, one is the personal one, where you need that willpower. And then there are others, which is more for the, the you know, is, is for enlightenment, basically. So ultimately, the goal, I think, for, for some people will be that complete understanding of who they are the ultimate reality that's them and to uh, also have the reality actually become objective to you. Because otherwise, you know, if you don't understand, you're always objective to reality. Like the Bodhis, like uh, Bodhidharma said that once in a small verse, uh, when you are, when you understand reality follows you, when you are, when you don't understand, then you basically are becoming objective to reality. And that is that is interesting, <laughs> you know. These are these are these are thoughts that are completely connected with what we are talking here, because ultimately, what do we really want? Yeah, we want all these beautiful experiences, but we always ask ourselves who we are, and and so and that question already leads us to enlightenment. And I'm talking about a process, you know. I mean, just that you become, let's say, in 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 your mind, in your head, there are more and more lights on <laughs> so to speak you know i don't know if i make sense now so uh, in a way it's about um not being a product of your environment that when we live without awareness we become a product of our environment when we yes. live without willpower we become a product of our environment because all all that needs to happen is the environment gives you a different trigger and that trigger will start a particular process within you and you're not going to be aware of it and you're not going to have the strength to go against it. So it's just going to happen that way, right? So when you don't have awareness and willpower, you become a product of your environment. When you have awareness and willpower, then you have some degree of freedom. You can live creatively in the sense that you can create your future rather than have your future be a repetition of your past and, you know, uh, depending on random events. Yes. Yes, it's not a, a life worth living. It's like, even when the Buddha said, you know, like, he, he spoke about mindfulness, and, and these meditations, they come really, as you know, from the Four Noble Truths, particularly from the last steps in the Eightfold Path. And uh, he says, you know, when you're not mindful, then you're as if dead already. It makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes. You have in the mindful self discipline, you have this duality in there, and everything is duality. Everything is on and off. That's just the way things are, right? 
even when you go to meditation, you, you end up in the void <laughs> and you want to get out there again sometime. And then you're again in the action world. So it's all med- for me, I don't have any any uh, exception to duality. It's it's perfectly great for me. I love it. That kind of idea understanding. And you have in that in that uh, chart, which I have in front of me, which is about the mindful self-discipline. And it's on your website. It's on the website, mindfulselfdiscipline.com, the minus one and the plus one. But if you can just explain this a little bit, how you see plus one, self-discipline goes to the designed life, minus one, no discipline goes back to the conditioned life. And then I need to for, to, to uh, finish the podcast with the websites you have so people can find you. There will be also in the show notes. And let's just get into this because then I understand better. Well, my audience. Yeah. So that's that idea of plus one and minus one is an idea that I explore in the book to help people get super clear about the, the value of each decision. Now, mindful self-discipline is about living mindfully. It's about living with awareness. And when you live mindfully, you realize that every moment matters, that every decision matters, that every day matters. Every moment, you can be taking a step towards your designed future, towards your designed identity, or you can be gravitating towards the conditioned identity and the conditioned life. And so asking yourself that question, is this action right now a plus one or a minus one, helps you have that black and white clarity that you you cannot hide in the middle. There's no gray area, right? It's either a plus one or it's a minus one. Otherwise, the mind is like, oh, you know what? This is kind of okay. It doesn't really matter. It's just an exception or, you know, no. Is it a plus one or is it a minus one? And when you start becoming aware like this and asking yourself these questions, then you become more disciplined. Then you make better use of your time and you make better decisions. And one day you will look back and you'll be happy with your choices, that you'll be happy with your life. Your future self will be happy with you. So that's the purpose of asking plus one and minus one. When you know that you want to write a book or that you want to learn how to play the guitar or that you want to upskill in your career so that you can change jobs or whatever is your goal. And instead of working on that thing, you're spending an extra half an hour scrolling on Instagram and TikTok. Is that a plus one or is it a minus one? Well, it's a minus one. Right? When you have when you have made a commitment to exercise every day and uh, one day you feel tired and you say, like, oh, I think I'm going to skip today. Is that a plus one or it's a minus one? It's a minus one. Right? So if you start asking this question multiple times a day and in the Mindful Self-Discipline app that I have developed, I, I actually developed that app so I could give people a tracker. And whenever you're making a decision like this, you're tracking plus one and minus ones. So again, to become really aware of the quality of your decisions as that is the quality of your life. Yes, that's that was a good ending. No, <laughs> that was a good ending. It was super interesting. Actually, I would love to talk much more with you, because that's a privilege for me. Uh, if I wouldn't have had, if I wouldn't have started that podcast, I would probably not get together with incredible people like yourself. <laughs> so now let's uh, just see what we can um, now say. Important. There are these two books, uh, Giovanni wrote: Practical Meditation, a Simple Step by Step Guide. You can find more information on this on his website, liveanddare.com. Live and dare. Do you want to repeat this so I don't uh, spell it? Uh, I don't say it the wrong way so people can understand it better? Sure. So I have, I, I have two websites and two books. So they're the two different parts of my, of my teaching career. One of them is liveanddare.com. That is focused on meditation, spirituality, and well-being. And the other one is mindfulselfdiscipline.com and that is focused on basically what we have been talking about here today the ideas of developing awareness and willpower getting to know your aspirations living a life that is more aligned developing good habits etc and so the first book is more related to the live and there and that book is practical meditation and the second book mindful self-discipline is connected to this part of my work yeah, fantastic. But practical meditation was for me, um, most of the things I know, meditation I know from this book. And uh, you have a, a newsletter that goes out 40,000 people every week, I think. Yes. Now, 
Thank you, Giovanni, for having been on the show. It was a real pleasure and learning experience. And thank you, my dear listeners, for joining us today. Thank you, Giovanni, for, for being my guest. Thank you, Joseph. So the recap, recap of the show with bullet points are in the show notes with all the links mentioned during the interview on ownbythebeach.com. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to have you here again for our next episode. This is your host, Joseph Schinwald. Thank you and goodbye until we meet again. Mm-hmm.